We're going to demonstrate here the use of the Gore iliac branch endoprosthesis as a patient who had a 4.7 centimeter abdominal aortic aneurysm, a right common iliac which enlarged to 3 centimeters, and a left common iliac uh, dilation of about 23 millimeters. Plan was to place a bell bottom on the left side and an iliac branch device on the right side. So we accessed both sides, uh, placed wires. Here you can see the send line measurements, which allow us to uh, plan the device. Uh, there's an 18 French sheath on the right side, a 12 French sheath on the left side. Here you can see a wire uh, has been placed, um, a step wire up the descending thoracic aorta. A second, um, this is an 035260 glide wire, which has been snared uh, from the left sided 12 French sheath access. Um, you work together, basically feeding the wire and you don't cut through the bifurcation. The retrograde injection uh, confirms the, the markings. These markings, which we're looking at, is because we always fuse the preoperative CT scans. And by convention, we use any right-sided uh, marks we depict as being red. On the left side, it's green. So you can see the origin of the left common iliac artery. Uh, the takeoff and ascent line of the internal iliac artery. You can see the fusion marks, basically, are beautiful here. We also choose the uh, gantry angle uh, for opening up the iliac based upon pre-op CT scan. Um, so essentially what has been done now is we're advancing the endoprosthesis up over the dual wire and as it exits, and some of this has been speeded up for the purposes of making sure we get all the content, you'll see that there's a wire wrap. And so the, the uh, Stiff wire goes right through the main body. There's a separate port coming through the right side and so you can see that the wire is wrapped. And so we turn it in one direction and it actually makes it worse. So you go 360 back and then, you know, another 180, 360. And that's what you want to see is that nice wire separation which has occurred at that point in time. So what that means is the long uh, mark should be pointing towards the um, Ipsilateral internal iliac cord. You can see we're positioning it here. And you want the uh, port or the gate, I should say, to be high enough um, that you can navigate down through the uh, side, the port of the side limb and actually be able to access the internal here. Maybe a little more distal than you ideally want it. And so at this point in time, what you're going to do, I remember the, this is pre cannulated. Uh, essentially, what we're going to do is bring up a, uh, a burn catheter. Um, the, the, the burn cards are going to be used after we put the sheath here. And the way you're going to get the sheath in here is you've got a tension on this wire. Otherwise, it, you can see to start with it tends to be pushing on the other side. So there's tension in both groins. You can see these hands pulling down on that. And now the sheath is through the port. And through the sheath, we're going to bring in a uh, burn catheter to allow us to uh, access the graft. And you got to be a little careful here because it is possible. It may have happened here a little bit to move the endoprosthesis a little bit more uh, distally than it was when you first deployed it. So now we're bringing up um, the uh, burn catheter. Then we're going to give up that crossover wire at that point. Uh, we're going to place a separate wire from the left leg. <clears throat> and we're going to use that to catheterize the internal iliac artery. As I say, this has been speeded up about 200%. And so now the burn is in here. Fortunately, it went in uh, it right away. Uh, then the question is, do you have enough uh, wire in there to track it? We actually lost the wires to pull the sheath back, so uh, you get to do it again. Um, we, we really need to have sufficient purchase in there. We spent some time doing this. We actually changed the gantry angle, reshot an arteriogram, because uh, you want to get into that superior gluteal artery if possible. And so here you can see we took us a minute or two to actually <clears throat> get around that uh, curvature race in the vessel and get the wire out into the butter. But it's worthwhile spending some time to do that. Otherwise, what happens if you don't have enough wire purchase, then you can pull the whole thing out of the internal iliac artery as you, as you, as you come uh, up and over. So just uh, changing the wire uh, and changing the gantry angle so that we can actually see how to steer this. <clears throat> Eventually we get it out through the spear gluteal artery. Uh, and once we do that, we you can see that we're obviously where we want this to go. We're just having trouble uh, because of the proximal position of that catheter. We didn't really feel like we had enough. Now all of a sudden it's out there. Uh, the wire actually tracked. Now one of the things you're looking at here is the, the crossover sheath as you advance this. 
uh, is advance the catheter. You don't want the sheath to come back. The sheath can buckle up into the aorta. And here it's coming back a little bit. You just got to keep an eye on that. And again, um, advancing the sheath so that that doesn't happen. Because we still, of course, obviously got to get the, uh, the internal iliac limb uh, up and over. So you got to have the sheath inside that um, IBE device. So what we've done now is uh, place the rosin wire um, out into the buttock. Uh, that's a nice position. The burn is coming out. <clears throat> and we're going to place, replace that with um, the internal iliac graft. In this case, we'd measured the internal iliac cord at 10 millimeters where we're using the uh, 12 millimeter device. <clears throat> Any sign you see these marks moving, it's because we're moving the image intensifier. As soon as you go into fluoro, everything updates. That's one really one of the advantages of fusion. And now, again, a little bit of forward pressure on the, on the graft as we're bringing the endoprosthesis up. Sorry, it's a forward pressure on the sheath. The endoprosthesis is going to come in. You really don't want that sheath bouncing around at the top end of the IBE device. <clears throat> So we're just confirming, you see us injecting there, that craniated pattern on the um, external iliac cord, part of it's bowel gas, but it also tends to get bunched up because this is the, the sheath is in there. <clears throat> and you can see we're coming up through the left side and we're advancing that uh, internal iliac limb. And it actually tracks beautifully. Uh, one of the other things that we've marked, and we had a long um, distance here, is the, the first branch, because we don't really want to sacrifice these branches. <clears throat> uh, once we're happy, we've got it in position. You can't see here, but it's actually, the first branch is actually marked on our fusion. <clears throat> so pulling the sheath back so it's cleared the internal iliac limb. And, you know, much like all of these, you unscrew it pull it back and, the, and the, uh, the limb deploys very nicely. Next step, of course, is to retrieve the delivery system um, through the left groin. And making sure you're not losing that rosin wire. Here's the delivery system coming out. We're gonna replace it by, I believe it was a 12 balloon. The uh, insert schematic shows what we've just done. We've deployed it, now we're gonna bring up a balloon Put it first of all in the seal zone and then uh, inside the internal iliac and then in the area of overlap and IV device. So balloon is now coming in. There it is. You just line up the arrow markers with the end of the endoprosthesis. Then we'll see that. I believe we changed it out to a 14 uh, bigger balloon. Now, let's go ahead and use the same balloon from the overlap. <laughs> now, once you've done this, the next step is to fully deploy the IBE. You can see at the moment it's still constrained uh, as it goes down into the uh, right external iliac cordy. So we're gonna pull the sheath back. <clears throat> this is the larger balloon that we used to actually seal the gate. Once we've done that, balloon can be removed and you can complete the depletion, the deployment, I should say, of the IBE. There you can see it's now being fully deployed and the delivery system on the right side is removed. do is 
uh, bring up the codable one. And we're just going to touch this up. This slit with the overlap and approximately. All right, now the balloons, so obviously uh, we're ready for them to come out. Now it's time to move on to the second phase of the operation, and that is to put in the main body of the excluder. And what we've done is put the dilator back in the 18. Now we're advancing that up into the aorta over the wire. Uh, the little purple circle is actually the origin of the inferior mesenteric artery. The red circle is the origin of the very distal uh, uh, right renal artery. There's a big difference between the, um, the right renal and the left renal artery in this particular situation and this particular patient. So we're just checking the bifurcation here. At this point, you've got to give everything up from the internal iliac uh, artery. The balloons are out, you're going to pull the sheath back so it sits in the bottom end of the aorta. And sometimes you can just uh, you pull the wire back and then re-advance it in the aorta. You may or may not have to direct that. So the purple circle just below the right renal, right renal member is red. Um, the green is on the left side. You can see there's a couple of centimeters at least between the two iliac arteries. Now we've got that wire deflected up the aorta. And one of the important things here was making sure there's enough length uh, between the uh, that distal right renal artery being able to get the IDE in and then uh, put in the main body of the excluder here. <clears throat> we opted not uh, to cross the limbs, uh, but we thought we may have to shorten the right iliac limb, uh, the extension that we're going to put between the IBE and the main body just a little bit. Sheets being pulled back. Uh, we opted to not cross them. We thought we'd be able to take up enough length. You know, puff in some dye, confirm how I have to reposition the fusion marks. Again, the fusion tends to get changed a little bit with the, um, the deformity that occurs with the devices. And so you can actually readjust that as you on the fly during the operation. Now we're actually deploying the main body of the excluder. We, uh, the left iliac component remains constrained at this point. Uh, the gate has opened up and you can see the gate nicely there. And so what we're gonna have to do is we've measured that length and what we're gonna do now is give up the wire because the wire, remember, is outside the uh, main body. Uh, this allows us to direct the wire you know, up into that limb um, and it was fairly straightforward to do that. We always confirm that we're actually in the limb and inside the, the main body, in this case, by spinning the burn catheter. <clears throat> and now we're gonna change that out for a stiff wire. Once we've actually measured the length, that, that's the pigtail marker, just so we can uh, confirm our length, replace it with the, with the uh, stiff wire. And now we're bringing up that iliac limb extension um, you can see that um, the overlap markers, so, so we, the long marker is the top basically of the overlap. Uh, the graft was just a little bit long. You can see the markers uh, in the IBE that we can't go beyond, otherwise we'll trap it. So here what we do, we deploy the top end, we push up on the graft a little bit, and then we deploy and retain that two centimeter overlap, it looks good. Once we've done that, obviously we can retrieve the delivery system from the right, pull the sheath back on the left, and deploy the, um, uh, the, the rest of the main body. <clears throat> we then measured the distance to the bifurcation. Remember, put the bell bottom, that's the reason you need an 18 French sheath on the left side. Bell bottom has now really been brought up in the position. The green uh, circle is the origin of the internal iliac artery. The device has now been deployed. And then we use our aortic balloon to dilate this up into place. Um, Serially, and you're going to do the same thing on the left side. Pigtail marker is now going to be uh, placed, and we're going to perform a completion uh, angiogram. 
And so the completion angiogram, you can see internal iliac artery is filling and there was no evidence of an endoleak. Thank you very much for your attention.